So hey everybody, today I wanted to talk a little bit about OBJ export settings. Um, I've been gradually uh, getting the export functionality uh, bit by bit into a, into a good state. And right now I'm actually fairly happy with where it is. And I think the quality is just as good as Moi for the most part. And so I wanna walk through what the basic settings are. Now let's say you have a kind of game-like asset like this where you have a mix of kind of curve and planar faces. Now, in the typical game asset pipeline, um, you are gonna wanna produce you know, one of three kind of different versions of your model. You might wanna start with a low and high poly triangulated version of your model. So the easiest way to do that in plasticity is you can use this density slider and we can bring this down to like get a very coarse triangular mesh, like you can see how coarse that is over here, or we can bring that all the way up to one and get like a super high dense mess, mesh. And you can use this for baking or, or whatever. But typically, um, another use case, let me bring this down to like something like that. Another use case though, if you're gonna unwrap it or perform more modeling operations on it, you may also want like an NGON style workflow. An NGON style workflow is rather than turn this like NURB surface into a bunch of triangles, we're going to try and make um, N-sided polygons wherever they're, wherever they're effectively planes. Um, so if, if for example, we look at this polygon here, this is a planar face, um, you can see how flat that is. But the actual number of vertices around this is way more than three. It's probably, I don't know, 50 or 75 or something. So a triangulated version of this would break it into a lot of triangles. But n-gons in general are much easier for us to work with. Um, and at this point, like I said, compared to Moy, Plasticity's faceting algorithm is just as good, sometimes better, slightly better, sometimes slightly worse. But you're going to get nicely shaped n-gons. You're going to get a fairly decent edge flow from face to face. Not perfect, obviously, but fairly decent. And certainly on planar faces and stuff, you're going to get pretty high quality results. Um, and I think this model is a perfect example of like a typical, um, mostly finished game asset that, uh, that Plasticity is now going to facet pretty well. Now I want to talk a little bit about what these more advanced settings are and um, and how to use them to your advantage if you need to. I think for most users, just tweaking the density to get like more or less coarse mesh is probably enough, but you also have the ability to get a lot of extra control and so I'm going to walk through that right now. So I've set up a very simple scene just to uh, that will make it easy to understand some of the more advanced settings. So let's get just get started. Now for the most part, all you need to do is use this density field to drive more or less detail. But um, sometimes you need more advanced settings, and so that's what we're going to focus on first uh, today. The main thing that you might want to do, or the thing that you'll probably do the most often, I'm guessing, is drive like a lot of detail here through the density, but you might want to get rid of, say, like excessively small polygons. Like you might want a lot of detail so you get good curvature here, so here on the outer edge and face of this cylinder, but all these tiny triangles or, you know, if they're quads and n-gons, we don't need that many polygons for that curvature, it's small. So you can use the min width, for example, and kind of drive just as much detail as you want in that, in this tiny fillet, for example. Let's say we only really want to, we're now breaking into three segments, and maybe we only really want two. And so we can use the min width setting um, to basically allow us to have lots of detail in large areas, but throw away excessive details in small areas. Okay, now the next example I wanna walk through is like in a simpler cylinder. Okay, um, let's work with, let's work with tries. Yeah, I think that's easier. So maybe quads will be easiest to see. So I'm going to, 
Let's bring this down. Or let's, okay. Let's have something really coarse. All right, so when you have like a perfect ma mathematical circle, when you're fastening it, you need to break it down into these segments, into these line segments, right? And so in this example, we have one, two, three, four, five, okay, five times four is 20, slices of the pie for this, um, for this circle. And if we, let me just make these very tolerant, for example. If we use these angle tolerances, we can basically say for any given curvy edge, we want a certain number of segments as it passes through 360 degrees, let's say. And now an interesting thing about these settings, the surface angle and curve angle settings, is that they're sort of scale independent, meaning that if I facet this, um, the number of segments in the circle, in a large circle, is going to be basically the same as the number of segments in a small circle if I use these angle tolerances to drive the detail. So we're going to get just as many triangles here as here, which is maybe not something we want. So in general, I recommend having these angle tolerances at pretty coarse values, you know. Um, and if we want more detail, we can use the plane tolerances. Now the plane tolerances, let's focus on this sphere, I guess. Um, the plane tolerances are focused not on like the angles that a curve passes through, but how much physical distance there is between these faceted approximations of the body and the mathematically correct preserved surface. So the actual sphere has this perfect surface, and these facets are, you know, a centimeter away or something from the mathematical surface. Now, you can use the surface plane tolerance, which is a measure of distance, to drive detail. And what's nice about the surface plane tolerance and the curve plane tolerance is they are not scale independent. Larger features, so if you bring down the tolerance here, larger features will get more detail and smaller ones won't. So focusing again here, I guess let's do these both at the same time. Focusing again here, if we have rather coarse um, surface angle tolerances and curve angle tolerances for our angular details, we can get more details in larger features by bringing, so you see that this is staying constant, the amount of detail on this face, but we're getting much more detail around this face. So we can basically use the angle tolerances to get an equal amount of detail to curvy things of any scale. A big circle and a small circle get the same amount of detail. And we use the plane tolerances to get more detail in larger things and less detail in smaller things. Now, some of these other settings are interesting, but I don't feel like going into them right now because this video is already too technical and boring. But I think this should give you uh, a bit of a jumping off point for making high quality um, faceted meshes for rendering, for game assets, for whatever. I think at this point, like the quality of Plasticity's exporter is about as good as it gets for an automated, um, for automated faceting for a kind of game asset workflow. Um, and it, and so yeah, so I hope this uh, hope this is useful.